So for our last data um, video, we are going to be looking at Open Data Philly. Um, since we're in Temple over after all, and since this data is out there, um, you can see that there's 374 data sets, which I think is pretty impressive for uh, um, you know not a massive city like Philly to have all that data available. Um, you can browse by topic here. Um, so there's all sorts of different topics um, that you can browse by. And um, you know you can see recent additions as well as recent tweets and whatnot to see um, what's going on. So the big thing here is you can definitely go into the weeds here and just get like raw data. But what's really nice about this website um, is I'd rather you not look um, for raw data. Um, so, I'm going to give you um, two different examples. I just want an environment, and there's large building energy benchmarking data. Um, and then there's this building energy um, visualization tool. Um, there's other, other tools here, too. And then you can sort of see there's all of the data and resources here. Um, so, some of these are very much, um, most of these you see are just sort of different types of data files. Um, which you can do all sorts of things with. And the tools up here are the ones you really want to use, I would say, um, because really they pull from the data that's below it. Um, so this is a good example of that. So we launched this Philadelphia Energy, and we're going to explore the map. So energy benchmarking is all of these little dots um, are basically how much the building uses in energy. Um, KBTU is a unit of um, energy kilo BTU and per square foot so again this is normalized data because you can compare building to building because you divide by the square footage of the building itself um, so um, as long as the buildings are similar in nature you know if one is a um, residential home and the other is a residential home then you can compare the two or maybe one's a nine to five office building and another's a nine to five office building you can compare the two um, and that's why they're sort of categorized here by building type and then the size of the bubble is how much energy they use per square foot. So the big bubbles are really high energy consumers, and the small bubbles are low energy consumers. Um, so we're just going to go to um, Temple zip code. We're going to take a look of several of the buildings that are going on here. Um, so if we look at a relatively low energy user, um, this is 1700 North Broad. Um, we, if we look at another one, this is Klein. Um, there's Alter Hall. So this is an interesting one because it went from 127 in 2017 to 157 in 2018, um, which seems to be um, a pretty drastic increase for, for one year. So maybe it's worth exploring that if we're um, Temple. Um, what was another one I wanted to look at uh, before? So this is Mitten, and it's going down um, pretty well in energy use. So it might be something to look at if they're doing something well. Oops. And so you can see, too, this is the biology building. The biology building probably has a lot of labs and whatnot involved. And a lot of labs mean usually a lot more energy use. And that's why this number is 600 rather than the other ones we were seeing, which was around 100-something. And this is Cirque here, same thing, a lot of labs, so it has um, um, a bunch of stuff going on, and these two years are pretty similar. Um, so this just gives you an idea of the types of things that you can see um, with this data. You can see all sorts of, of different patterns and different ideas um, from, from this. Kind of, It's similar in a way if you look for... Um, patterns in this data, you might really see an idea as to um, what's going on. So um, so if we look over here, too, I don't know what these two things are, but I, this just jumped out at me right now. This has a relatively low EUI, which is, again, the energy per square foot, and it went down in the past year. But if we look right next door, the bu bubble's a lot bigger. It's relatively high. And this is other, so I'm not sure what these two buildings are. But it's just something, again, that caught my eye, and you might want to 
um, explore that further, especially since they're right next to each other. So this is just one example of a visualization. Another one, um, you know, you can even go to the showcases um, place, and there's all sorts of different um, different things going on here. So let's just look at this one. So this is just showing um, transit riders and how many um, minutes late they are. So if we maybe if we just look at um, instead of all the routes, maybe if we just look at route number one. And you can sort of just see, you know, how many minutes late we're, we're just showing negative 20, negative 10. So these are the sort of transit riders that were late during those routes. Um, so there's all sorts of visual information um, that you can get from these data sets. Um, and again, the showcases are, are a pretty good way to, to do that. Um, a lot of times you'll see maps um, of, you know, the maps are sometimes the, the, the easiest things to display data of, um, and those are the two I just showed you, but um, looks like there's a dashboard here for um, shooting victims and, and their attributes and whatnot too. So there's all sorts of data that you can see just from Open Data Philly, and sort of getting these data sets and using these data sets to display it in a nice way. And you're going to be working on an assignment for that. Okay, thanks for watching.